this section is on how to be with somebody mm. who is struggling with suicidal thoughts. Mm. Now the reason I put this in there is because a lot is communicated not by what you say or by what you do, but inferred through the way that you sit with somebody. Mm. Um, at a spirit level or emotional level, I don't know how you explain it, but a lot is communicated by what's inferred. Mm. Your attitude. Your attitude, yeah. uh, your mood, yeah. how steady or safe or secure you're feeling, all that mm. will just come across. Mm. And one of the things I really enjoy about Dave, actually, is the sense of calmness that he has with um, big and scary topics, uh, like what we're talking about, um, which is why I think it's so good to do this with him and have good. him along with us here today. So, so what are we going to talk about first? Well, I think on that note, one of the first things is that... Um, people need to know that they're cared for. It's this whole thing of being with the person. So we don't care, the old saying is, we don't care how much you know until we know how much you care. Mm. And it's true, especially with those under stress. Mm. So it's all about being in the moment. You don't have to be hugely professional. Mm. Just show that you genuinely care mm. and that you can then offer them hope. Yeah. And, and talking about hope, we're not talking about... Um, silly hope which says oh, i'll be right mate we'll get through this mm. oh it's not a problem that that just pushes a person away mm. we're talking about the kind of hope where you work with them to say let's look at the solutions let's see if we can find out what's causing this mm. so and even if your role isn't that specific even you know doing that problem solving stuff to find yeah. out what it's going on it might just be that you're there just to be with them and trust the process mm. like We've probably both spent hundreds of hours with people mm. who have struggled with suicidal thinking. And mm. after having done that, you get to a stage where you just trust that this is going to be okay. We're going to find a way through this. Yeah. And, uh, and that's something that we just carry mm. um, as helpers mm. because we can trust the process. We know it's going to be all right and we'll figure it out. But the other person we're speaking with, they may not know that. And it's hard for them to hold that hope. Mm. Um, they haven't seen the p big picture or been through this before or perhaps have lost sight of it. Mm. So something that you carry is just the sense of, it's going to be okay, we'll sort this out, we'll get through this. Mm. And, that's, and that's carrying or holding the hope. Yeah. I like the fact that he also talked about process. It, it also gives you a sense of confidence and that's what we're trying to do is give you a sense of process here. Uh, some steps. And in our next session on assessing low risk, medium risk, high risk, and then what to do managing that uh, becomes very important. And we've got a helicopter coming, so we might just take a ad break, shall yeah. we? Have you ever tried eater chips? <laughs> they are crisp. Being able to offer calmness, not reacting. Mm. Don't gasp, don't go, oh my goodness, and don't make judgments on what they say saying, oh, that's just crazy, how could you? And especially for religious people or Christians, often they'll say, oh, God would hate that. How could you even think that? Mm. Um, learn not to do that. I often say to myself, when people are very angry with you or they tell you they're wanting to die, and they may even, look, they may even swear about God and call God all kinds of names. You don't have to protect God. God's big enough to look after mm. himself. Your job is to stay calm and safe and help them find a way through. Mm. It's a comment you made before about um, helping them way, find a way through. Mm. Uh, and I, my mind's just gone blank Fair enough. <laughs> for a moment. Well, you, you reminded me that a big part of being with somebody is, is just being present with them, how they're feeling, what they're thinking, what, they're, um, you know, what needs are alive for them. And probably not getting too caught up in in their thoughts and judgments about their situation because you can get caught up in arguments or mm. trying to reason with them differently and sometimes it's not the best place to do that so mm. sometimes it will be you know if they're like well actually right now i'm going to go and do something dumb you might want to do some reasoning with them but at the same time um, don't get caught up in too much little stuff just be with them mm. just connect with them because mm. that meets a whole bunch of our hum human needs mm. is just to sit and be with someone and be mm. present with them and how they're feeling. And if you can just connect with that and hear them out, you're going to take a huge amount of steam off mm. uh, whatever the situation is. Mm. Now, have you remembered what you were going to say before? No. Okay. But let's go on. Sure. Yeah. So some things are when you're sitting with them, um, don't buy into secrecy. 
Mm. Don't put yourself in a remote situation where you're trapped. Mm. Um, uh, like you said, don't pass judgments. Um, and be prepared then to make contracts with people. In other words, who can you contact? Because that's about giving them hope. You know, we've often said people actually don't really want to die. What they want to do is just find a way to get rid of their problem. Mm. Yeah. And so if you can just say, all right, how do we help you through this? Um, if we could help you solve your problem, this is an important question. If we could help you solve your problem, would you have a need to die? That's an important question to ask. Um, people often say no, but yeah. So ask permission to contact people in that and how to support them best. Another thing is to make sure that you uh, stay in contact with them. You know, don't, don't just hand them over to somebody else if it's out of your league. Um, catch up with them, make sure you show that you care, mm. which is very important. I was going to say something about that earlier, and Were now you? I've remembered. Good. I remember in my counselling training, they said that the research around what different models of counselling were helpful, the research showed that really it didn't matter what kind of help you gave, as long as the person experienced you as being someone who cared for them. Yeah. Which I thought was really interesting and annoying after I'd spent years of learning how to be a really clever counsellor. Yeah. Learn that the basics are, are, are still true. Just yeah. love and accept people and yeah. that's going to be therapeutic. Yeah, and, and that's really true. And therefore, often professionals think that if they're professional, they don't have to show care mm. and they lose their patients. Mm. So even professionals need to invest themselves into the people and show yeah. they really do care. Mm. Um, uh, uh, one important thing about sitting with people is Often different cultures carry different beliefs and actual ways of dealing with people who are suicidal. Um, in New Zealand, Māori people carry a different way of viewing suicidal intent and how their families um, get around them and their tribe get around them to help. Uh, Samoan people view it differently from Māori people and Asian people view it. Asian people view it as often a sense of family shame. Um, so. I would encourage you that if the person sitting in front of you comes from a different culture, you need to spend the time to find out how that culture reacts with it and what they really need. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone's different and uh, it's really hard to know what someone's going to need and, uh, and appreciate as a, as a form of respect for them. Yeah. So um, be mindful of that and just tune in, notice, listen. Yeah. Good. Is that about us for this one, Dave? I think so. That'll do. Okay. Bit of cutting and editing, maybe. Mm.